cool. <laughs> uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you all so much for having me and probably for taking time out from all of the amazing projects that are here at the Open Hardware Summit to listen to some guy from Washington. Um, I work at an organization called Public Knowledge, and we are a nonprofit consumer advocacy group in Washington, D.C., and we focus really on sort of digital issues, consumer issues, new technology issues around consumers. And what that means in practice is that I spent most of my day making sure that people are free to do new, interesting, innovative things and making sure that you know just because you control the way that I connect to the internet, you don't control what I do on the internet, or just because you have some copyrights in music doesn't give you veto power over new technologies that you don't understand. And so generally that when the world is changing uh, and you are happy with the way the world was before, you can't leverage power in Washington to stop that. So, of course, as an organization, we, are, we, we love openness. We love openness, and we love it because openness allows people to take full advantage of technology and allows people to do it in unexpected ways. Because it's open, it can come from anywhere. And traditionally, we have focused on open source software. And the reason for that is because software is easy. Right? All you need is a computer, and you can write amazing, world-changing software, and as a result, great software came from random corners of the country and random corners from, of the globe. And you didn't need to be attached to a huge institution or in order to bring great new software to the world. And as a result, you got lots of disruption because people weren't attached to existing institutions and doing great things. And a couple of years ago, uh, we, we began to recognize, and we certainly <laughs> were not the only ones to do this, but we began to recognize that the same sort of thing was starting to happen with hardware. That people were getting the tools in their hands that you no longer needed to be affiliated with a huge institution to start doing some really interesting things with hardware. And so, you know, we started, we, we started actually engaging this with, the, with through 3D printing, uh, as is sort of not a surprise. And 3D printing led almost inevitably to open source hardware. And we've sort of been here ever since thinking about all the ways that open source hardware can really advance a number of goals and what we can do in Washington to kind of make sure that that happens. So I want to kind of step back and, and tell you a little bit of a framing story. Uh, most of the real work in Washington happens at cocktail parties and at happy hours. That's just that's the way the city works, yeah, right. for better or worse. <laughs> but and the first question that anyone will ever ask you at a Washington cocktail party is, so what do you do? And they're asking you that question basically to size you up, to decide if they want to keep talking to you or to walk away and find someone more important. And so people come up to me and they say, oh, hey, what do you do? And I say, oh, well, you know, I, I work at public knowledge. And if I, if I want to kind of get their attention, I say, oh, and you know, oh, I do a lot of things, but one of the things I do is, is 3D printing and open source hardware. And, and at that point, probably about half the time, the person kind of stares at me like I threw up on their shoes, and they, they turn and walk away and find someone you know, attached to the appropriations committee or something. But at the time, they'll say, oh, you know, what's, what, what are you guys doing with that? And I say, well, you know, 3D printing is, is sort of this amazing technology, and it allows you to transfer you know, physical items over the internet, allows you to collaborate on all these physical items, and you can see this world where it's going to disrupt a bunch of manufacturers, and you can kind of see who's going to like it and who's not going to like it, and it raises all these really interesting copyright and patent and trademark questions, and we're really kind of trying to set up a stage, so if someone comes in and says, no more 3D printing, we say, no, 3D printing is great, and they say, okay, that makes all the sense in the world. I, I see the vision that you have. What are you guys doing with open source hardware? And I kind of, I stop. And I say, well, so open source hardware is really cool. <laughs> and there are a lot of people doing some really interesting things with it. But right now, it's hard, it's hard to paint the picture of exactly how open source hardware plays out, who it disrupts, Who's happy? Who's not happy? We're, we're confident that it's going to be a big deal. But at least I'm not smart enough quite to game it out. So 
Until we can figure out exactly what we're worrying about, what we're thinking about, one of the things we're focusing on are building relationships, making sure people in Washington understand what open source hardware is. And that was, we did, we did an event uh, in the spring that many people in this room came down to. It's called OHDC, Open Hardware DC, where we brought a bunch of open source hardware people down to DC just to basically say, hey, this is what we do. Uh, this is real. It's not just some like, made up thing on the internet. Uh, we, are, we are companies, we're doing great innovative things, you probably want to support us in the future. And I say, so, you know, we're doing a lot of relationship building. But then there's this other thing. And if they're still paying attention to me, they haven't looked for some other staffer or someone more important to pay attention to talk to, I say, there's this other thing that we do too. You see, the thing about open source hardware is that it makes openness make sense to people. I mean, look, everyone in this room is a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, is a supporter of open source software. I go out on a limb. And many people in this room, <laughs> thank you, uh, many people in this room have the, have the capacity to take open source hardware or software, open up the code and change it and write, it, write better software, write different software. But it's very easy to forget that for most people, Software is essentially magic, right? There are these magic boxes that are in the world, and if you go up to one of these magic boxes and you ask it to do something in just the right way, more often than not, the magic box will do it for you. And like the fact that some of the magic spells on that magic box are open and so there are these magicians out in the world who can take those spells and like rearrange them and do great stuff with them. Maybe you appreciate that in this sort of abstract openness is good sense. But in a, in a practical sense it doesn't, doesn't really like mean anything to you in reality. But when you start talking to people about open hardware, suddenly they can, they can kind of visualize it, right? They see it. They, they understand what it means to have a thing and open up a thing and being able to build on a thing and change a thing. And so all of a sudden, you're having this conversation with them about what it means to own something, what it means to be able to fix something, what it means to be able to improve something. And they're, they're, they're with you. They're like, yeah, this is, I, I can do this. I understand this. And you're like, well, that's open. And they're like, oh. Well, yeah, I mean, that's open, right? That, of course, that makes all the sense in the world. And then once you have them there, and you say, well, you know, with, that's open with hardware, but then there's open with software, there's open with data, there's open with this, there's open with that, and because they get it, all of a sudden, because it's Washington, they're instant experts on open, and they know all the ramifications of open, and they completely understand why you care about open, and it's all because hardware made openness concrete for them. And so, you know, we're still working on the, on the bigger issues. We're still working on building those relationships with the community, making sure people in Washington are aware of this, making sure that if there are policy questions that come up in the community, we have kind of a way to resolve them and think about them. But in the meantime, open source hardware is doing something much more important and that's making hardware really, and openness, really just concrete and real for a whole swath of people for whom it was an abstract concept at best. And so for that, I just, I wanted to come and say thank you for that and, and just say it's, it is, it makes my job much easier and because I'm lazy, I really appreciate that. And I was gonna kind of end it there, uh, but I wanted to raise one other thing, and this, is, this has been sort of something that we've been thinking about for a little bit, but I think the, you know, the, the events of the last week or two have, have really brought it to the fold, and I'm glad that uh, other speakers have, have mentioned this as well. The open source hardware community has managed to build this incredibly rich community. Everyone in this room, everyone around the world, everyone who wanted to be in this room but couldn't because the tickets were sold out. Uh, they, have, they have created this unbelievable resource, this unbelievable community. But I think that it's time for really clear thinking about what the nature of open source hardware is. And, and this is what I mean by that. Open source hardware is clearly a, politi a political and a cultural movement. 
And it's a movement that takes a lot of guidance from open source software. But I'm not as convinced that it can be a legal movement. And the reason for that is simple. Hardware is different than software. Unlike software, a lot of hardware, most hardware, is not born swaddled in intellectual property rights. And so as a result, from a legal standpoint, the kind of license that you attach to a piece of hardware may not be important because there's no right to license and there's nothing you can do to someone who violates that license. So as open source hardware grows and reaches people outside of the community for whom the social norms of the community are very important, there's no legal way to punish someone who strays from the ethos of open source hardware. And that's fundamentally different from open source hardware or software, when if someone is using open source software and strays from the ethos of the community, you can take them to court. And that does not mean that there is not incredible value in open source hardware and does not mean that this community is not doing incredible things, but it means that it has a fundamentally different set of problems and assumptions and ways that it has to interact with the world outside of the community. And it requires serious thinking as to what that means. I don't have an answer for that today, but I hope that people are doing real thinking about that. And what I really hope is the community brings the same open eyes and clear mind to this problem to figure out what it really means to be open source hardware that it has to so many other problems. So I, I hope that, that people are engaged with that. I'd love to talk about it more, but thank you so much for, for taking some time and, and back to people doing really cool stuff. So thank you.